Hi, Dr. David Cohen, your New York City board certified chiropractor and director of Synergy Wellness, Chiropractic and Physical Therapy in the Big Apple, Manhattan, New York. Going on 20 years of clinical experience and practice. I'm excited to bring you another Research Matters episode highlighting chiropractic research once again, every week. And without further ado, I present case study number five. Upper cervical subluxation, clearly found in newborns with or without symptoms. The fifth study every chiropractor should know comes out of the Journal of Manual Medicine and was published in June of 1992. This is a critical piece to understand as it relates to why infants and children need chiropractic evaluations and care if necessary. The study evaluated more than 600 children, all less than two years of age. In this research, they referred to the vertebral subluxation as a kinematic imbalance due to suboccipital strain, also known as KISS. The report talked about the pathogenic importance of asymmetric posture in small children and the fact that it is often played down. If recognized at all by the medical community, you and your community needs to understand this. The author noted that subluxation has a wide range of clinical signs and in many cases can be dealt effectively with manual therapy. The risks for why these children had KISS syndrome, as they called it, were from intrauterine misalignment, application of extraction aids in delivery, prolonged labor and or multiple fetuses. Birth is the cause. This study is one that you definitely want to know about and have certainty with as proof why infants and kids need chiropractic care. If you ever have anyone ask you why your kids need to be adjusted, please share this video highlighting the study for them. Let's look at the facts of the study. First off, they agreed that the main symptoms that KISS syndrome can lead to are torticollis, unilateral face asymmetry, C-shaped scoliosis, motor asymmetries, unilateral retarded maturation of hip joints, slowed motor development, sleeping disorders, neck sensitivity, face swelling, fever of unknown origin, loss of appetite, feet deformities, pathological reflexes, range of motion diminished by 30% or more, and parent reporting baby does not eat or drink well. They concluded that on these babies, an A to P radiograph of the upper cervical spine is imperative. The radiograph evaluation helps to find malformations and aids in determining the direction of the adjustment. There was no correlation between extent of the asymmetry and the symptoms or success of the treatment. This means that even a small subluxation is clinically relevant. The treatment involved an impulse adjustment and in most cases the direction and line of drive was determined by radiological findings 85% of the time. Six huge findings in this study. Number one, selection of the direction of adjustment without x-ray seems the most plausible cause of the less encouraging results of some colleagues. This means x-rays helped get better results. Two, the risk of treatment was minimal. No serious complications were encountered. Most children would cry for a moment, but stop as soon as they're in their mother's arms. In two cases out of roughly 600 children, vomiting was seen right after the adjustment, but had no negative effect of outcome in either case. Three, it was noted that the upper cervical spine remains a weak spot in most children which is why they should be re-examined before they start school at age six. And four, KISS is not confined to local complaints or even mechanical symptoms. 
and it's not taken into account when these children show signs of restlessness and concentration difficulties. Do you hear that? Subluxation may not have symptoms, and unfortunately for kids with the issues, such as restlessness and attention issues, the subluxation is typically not considered to be a cause. Every parent deserves to know this study. And five, KISS does not always lead to clinical symptoms. The author noted that babies with a contracted sternocleidomastoid muscle should not be subjected to operative measures to lengthen the muscle because they will nearly always respond perfectly to the adjustment of the upper cervical spine. And six, upper cervical delicate structures undergo considerable stress during the delivery process. And during delivery, a majority of newborns suffer from micro trauma of the brain stem and the tissues in the periventricular areas. The cause is normal births. Another interesting side note from this study was that the adjustment of the occipital cervical region all the way at the top of the neck led to disappearance of problems that the parents had not reported because they did not see a connection with the spine. If I had a nickel for every time I heard this in my 20 years of practice, I could feed a village here in New York City. How many times do we hear this in practice? And these parents would regularly note that their child would eat or sleep much better since the adjustment. Who needs to know about this? Everyone. This is a great study every chiropractor should have. Many people may ask why children should get checked by a chiropractor. Why would somebody with no symptoms go to a chiropractor? Or where did all my problems in my spine come from? And this study helps to explain all of that and more. This article alone is a game changer for humanity. If you were born, you need to be checked by a chiropractor to assure optimal spinal integrity and brain to body connection, period. Thanks for tuning in to Chiropractic Research Matters, episode five. See ya.